to yet another exciting episode of Chai with Hidaya. Yes, as usual, my name is Hidaya Abubakar, your favorite host. With me today, I'm co-hosting with Ignatius. Okay. Um, welcome, sweethearts. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I have here with me a very, very important guest in which I'll allow her to introduce herself. Um you know, briefly before we go into today's segments. May I know you? Uh, okay. Your name? Tell us about you. Thank you for having me here today. Welcome. My name is Sadia Balde. I am a sport photographer from the Gambia. Wow. Um, first time attending the Africa Cup of Nations 2023. And now, right now in Ghana to attend the All Africa Games happening in Accra. Wow. Yeah. So you're all the way from Gambia. Yeah to ghana so just because of sports what do you do so um i'm a sport photographer i started sport photography mm -hmm. in 2021 but i have been doing photography at the age of 15. that is when i actually started photography so i started doing my own after i graduated graduated in 2020 um that was when someone surprised me on my birthday with a camera wow. and yeah i started doing my thing and in 2021 well, well i have been seeing other photographers take pictures in the gambia but i have not seen anyone be taking pictures of sports in the gambia right. uh, because i do follow other sports internationally and they do really great mm -hmm. so in 2021 when the Af uh, afcon qualifiers was happening between gambia and south sudan in senegal i decided to apply for accreditation and i got accepted so I didn't know anything about sports, so I oh. went to YouTube, um, search a little bit about sport while I was in the bus going to Senegal, and then I set my camera and I was done. So yeah, get into the pitch, took pictures, but, but one thing that makes me different from other photographers are that while the game is happening, I'm actually updating on my social media, so it's engaging people not the people that are not watching the game in Senegal, the while in the Gambia, actually know what is happening because in every minute that happened or either in 45 minutes someone scored a goal mm. i already have a picture of that person and the amount of minute that he scored the goal and then posted on my social media wow so you're you're you're, you're specifically a sports photographer or yeah. you do other things as well um i do other things that is sometimes sometimes the, when i fully got into sports um i know i do other photography for my family members, let's say my sister's wedding, mm -hmm. um, naming ceremonies and other type of photography that are family close related. Right. Those spots don't have much money in the Gambia. I would say if you really, really have your goals, it should not be on the amount of money that you are collecting because the Gambia spot is actually not really professional yet. And even sports photography is new right now. Exactly. So it's now that people are really engaged. And I have trained other photographers that wow. are right now. Yeah, that are right That's now in other so teams. Interesting. Yeah, I have worked with um, my first team I worked with was Real de Banjul, one of the top um, football teams in the Gambia. And mm. this season I'm working with Fortune FC, and they're the ones that sponsored my trip to Ivory oh, Coast to cover nice. the Afcon. Wow. So, so, you know. That's so nice. Um, you made the headlines throughout the, the AFCON, where all over social media had interviews. What was the experience? Okay. Making the headlines in the Africa Cup of Nations was a huge surprise to me, too. But um, it happened once I covered the game between Ivory Coast and Nigeria. Okay. So one of the photographers took pictures of me, I think because it's Afcon, they are noticing all around and they noticed that I was the youngest among all the photographers that came for the Africa Cup of Nation. It was, it first started, um, the first people that I wrote about it was Art Combined Times. There is a new, there's, there, they are a newspaper and they also, they are really active on the social media. Yeah. So after they wrote about it, I have, it went viral. It went, wow. like, it went like that. I have a lot of people texting me, calling me. I don't know them. People will be sharing it on their sports um, uh, pages, right? And I have a lot of people. Every single day I have calls, I have, mm -hmm. especially the people from Uganda. Yeah. I don't know what oh. they, their conversation and calls were too much. And to me, it challenged me to even do better because I know I wasn't the best photographer in mm. the Afcon. 
why I stood out was because I was the youngest and also Gambians, it was new and I have been updating them while even the game is happening. Because I could remember the first game that we have with Senegal, mm -hmm. they have technical issue. Gambia was not, and a lot of countries were not watching the AFCON from the first mm -hmm. 20 minutes. So what I do is I update them. Okay, the game has started. Senegal scored, unfortunately for us. And this is the amount of time. And this is the player that scored and his picture is also there. So it was amazing but making the headlines i actually felt it when guardians actually posted me yeah. just today before coming here i was like you know let me try one thing mm -hmm. i went to google and i was like the female photographer mm -hmm. in the gambia mm -hmm. like and <laughs> your pictures were all around wow that's, that's um, like the biggest i was <laughs> inside like nobody is watching i was like yes, oh, yes. <laughs> 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 that was that, 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 about how is the feeling being i can see you are a hijabi yeah and then being a young um of course beautiful lady a hijabi a muslim and um, being dominant in the photography industry and you know the you know fantastic part of this whole thing is sports yeah we all know sports when it comes to sports it's men dominate yeah. me exactly yeah. so how is the feeling like being you know in finding yourself in that space yeah. being a young hijabi a muslim a young girl beautiful girl and then being in the you know something like uh, dominance it's actually extremely unique is mm -hmm. you you are very different from any, everybody mm -hmm. because when we come the photographers we are huge <coughs> sorry we are huge and when we come and i remember one of the calf officials telling me do you do fashion i was like in the gambia this is normal this is a normal oh. way that we do but when you step in it's like trousers mm -hmm. and shirts and they are um they are photo um thing that they wore mm -hmm. does it yeah. but when i come in it's like whew, she's here like yeah it's you have super unique it's wow. super unique so you have other photographers that mm -hmm. even put on shorts and they are done exactly. everybody some ladies we put on their trousers and they are done so it's the environment you came from that it makes okay. you different okay. but to me this is what i grew up with i'm a muslim and i cover up and it's one thing that can make me wrong within the pitch and i don't feel like oh someone is looking at me if mm -hmm. i have bots or not mm -hmm. or my shape i yeah. don't actually care about it but when i wear my full hijab i can do anything i can run i can because i know nobody is pointing it's mm -hmm. whether they are pointing at the fact that i my trousers are big exactly <laughs> she, wore, she wore a very big uh -huh. jilbab or uh -huh. or her abaya is big or exactly. something else so i remember one um someone uh, because i wore the big trousers with the blue thing and someone commented like is the trouser for me <laughs> <laughs> wow and i also look at my trouser oh, like yeah, like this is really exactly. his right it's too big so exactly but yeah but i i'm, I'm so just um interesting you choosing photography as a as a female and choosing sports as a female what has been your motivation? You could have been a lawyer, a nurse, or any profession. What motivated you to become a photographer and at the same time chose sports in specific? So, I, so someone told me, why do I keep going into the male thing? Everything starts mm -hmm. male. Whatever you put your environment has to do with the male dominated thing. But just like i said i started at the age of 15 photography is something i love so much and to me because it's a male dominated job people ask if i face discrimination and stuff like that mm -hmm. but one thing i tell people is it's no matter what you do know how to approach the opposite gender okay. because in the africa cup of nation i was guided by a male photographer throughout it's how you approach them how you talk to them because they are all ready to help you especially given that i was small and i was hijabi mm -hmm. and it was going all around they were ready to help me so you need to work in hand with them because it's totally male dominated where you go in there sometimes i'm the only female before i have my team I will go, they will be like, I want to enter the stadium. I didn't know that Gambia was actually having one of their final matches mm -hmm. and there was no photographer at all. And I have to take the pictures and send it to them. And the fact that a lot of photographers don't go into sport photography is because it's not yet professional, there is no money. And the amount of money they will pay you, it 
you will sit for years before you're mm-hmm. able to get yourself mm-hmm. a correct camera. Mm-hmm. So it's, I would say maybe that is the thing that Allah has written for me mm-hmm. to go in for the male dominated mm-hmm. career. And one thing though, just work in hand with them, mm-hmm. know how to communicate best, not to come into the picture and feel like, you know what, I am big, I am a girl, I have, I'm empowered, I need to mm-hmm. overcome you, but no. Yes. Now, do you, do you have um, challenges as, um, as of course, the challenges definitely will be there in yeah. every field you find yourself. It comes with its own challenges. I mean, with the number of years you have been in this, you know, photography industry, specifically the sports, I want to find out some of the challenges because they are young, um, you know, ladies watching you, looking up to you. Yeah. Who might want to also do what you are doing mm-hmm. yes aspiring a lot of people i mean you've made headlines i've seen your pictures i never knew i was going to have the chance so i'm really honored right. to be with you i never knew i was going to have the chance to you know be with you kind of see um, Hadia Adiza Baila. Mm-hmm. Baila Baila, she had to introduce you to the show and then um, we are happy but of course i have lots of viewers mm-hmm. that are also up and coming who might want to are now trying to find their career path well, and, all, right. and might be motivated by what you because your story is very inspiring and i mean yes grace is there but if you don't put in the hard work and all it will not, it will not work yeah. yes so what are some of the challenges you faced or you are still facing how are you are you overcoming it and then you know tell us about some of the challenges so some of, are any. yeah some of the challenges that i have been facing is so before this afcon i've tried going to other afcons it didn't work mm-hmm. because i i it's not like i hate it but i i don't like the fact that i have to be going into offices mm-hmm. and telling you okay sponsor me i need to go and cover mm-hmm. the afcon mm-hmm. because at the end of it all the pictures come back to you because in the africa cup of nation they didn't say oh they said it was the gambia female photograph mm-hmm. so the gambia is there the name went there the flag went a bit high there mm-hmm. so uh, to me it was it was challenging and it was hard because i wanted to go with the gambia under 20 for the last year africa cup of nation mm-hmm. but it didn't work and the fact that i entered different offices to look for sponsors it didn't work maybe to me just like i said it, they did not understand what right. i was actually talking about so from there it was when i actually promised myself that i will make sure the work speaks for itself mm-hmm. i am not going to say anything i'm not going to write anything mm-hmm. but i'm going to allow the work for the work to speak for itself so, and the afcon was actually one of the best thing that the work spoke for itself i did not go to the social media or wow. write to any journalist mm-hmm. and be like i want you to secretly mm-hmm. do this no mm-hmm. they notice it they have seen it or everybody in the gambia especially on twitter wrote about it they have seen it and i think other challenges that we are facing especially right now the fact that it is not yet professional it is still a problem for us that to get international contracts or have, for example, the All Af- uh, Africa Games is in Ghana mm-hmm. here. Some Ghanaian photographers were contacted by CAF to be able to cover it. Yeah. We are not yet professional to be for, to, for us to be able to host tournaments. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I'll be able to get a mm-hmm. contract from CAF is mm-hmm. going to be very low, mm-hmm. like zero okay. percent, I would exactly. say. So we pray that other opportunities come along it the way come. but yeah it's 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 it will come and um, most definitely i'm um, still with the challenges yeah did you have as a muslim um i'm a muslim myself mm-hmm. and we all understand how growing up in a muslim family as a woman mm-hmm. um, you are being restricted from you know doing certain things um especially when it comes to probably um your job is related to maybe male the way you are you are going to get like a male dominated job and all right. there's some kind of restriction from some parents i mean muslim parents did you have any challenges i mean some parents will be watching mm-hmm. with their kids and then they're going to be like oh mommy i want to be like this girl this and this and this um did you have that challenges as a young beautiful hijabi um did your parents tell you okay if you have to do this you have to be in the hijab before did you have any restrictions did you have to fight your your way in or how did it all happen so i will say one of the reasons why i'm here today it's because my parents really really support me wow they so i am this um i am the third child in my family 
I could get up today and tell my parents I'm going to Senegal mm -hmm. and they don't have any word to add there. Wow. They have supported me throughout. Wow. I'll tell them I want this. The fact that if I tell them I'm going in for this, they believe they in believe. me exactly. because they have seen it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never told my, tell my mom that I want to make this, I want to make this, I want to make this. So I'm this go-getter, so they just allow me. Yeah. And you are right, it's really, really risky to allow your female child, mm -hmm. especially going into to travel, to travel yeah. with the team, to going to Senegal mm -hmm. to say you are covering mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody the first time I was going with the Gambia team to, to go. I didn't know anybody. So leaving me to go, especially if you have to cross the ferry, you have to go to another country, it's all risky. But to me, the trust they have in me is what really motivated me. What is for because, sure. Yeah, exactly. So nice. Because after I graduated, there is no multimedia school in the Gambia or mm -hmm. photography school. Wow. And I didn't get the actually the results I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I told my parents, I am going to a technical school. Mm -hmm. They said, okay. Wow. I told them, I'm going to pay my school fees. I am going to buy stuff mm -hmm. to myself mm -hmm. and I'm going to. So I started taking photography really seriously. I paid the three and a half years that I went in for. So I'm also. So aside from the passion, you also studied that construction. Is, oh, wow. I'm a technician oh. in building construction. Oh, wow. So I studied construction and I was done with it and they have always been my support. So my sister once told me that I'm the only one in the family that have her own job mm. and have her own way through it without any family interference. Yeah. Oh, we need to look for a job for her. We need to, because I want to build that where my sisters don't have to struggle. Mm. I have that belief that it doesn't only have to be my family, but I don't like seeing people struggle at all. Mm. If I will get that money, I will want anybody around me to feel it as well. You are really breaking the status quo. Yeah, I, right. I, I really love this. So, so, so they have been my biggest your support. Biggest support. Yeah. I mean, I'm enjoying your talk. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm highly motivated and I'm pretty sure my viewers are equally highly motivated by your speech. Do you intend to go into photography full time because you've also mentioned that you are also into building construction. construction. Good. Do you intend to go full time into sports photography or it's okay. something that is just for a short period of time um, where you would want to just do it probably whoever you want to motivate, whatever impact you want to put you after you place it, you divert and then go into um, what are your long or your, sh your short-term goals and your long-term goals? You would want to know about that. So um, photography is a born in person. It's something that if I'm into, I don't even think about. Any other thing? I studied even construction. I totally <laughs> forgot about no. it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be going through my pictures and I'll see where I was mm -hmm. on attachments mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I know construction is something that you can always go back to. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you can be okay. 35, you can, you can still always go back to construction. Right. It's always there. Mm -hmm. But I'm really, really sure that the school fees that I paid for myself, one day I'll have it definitely. back. Most, most <laughs> <I'll>, definitely. Exactly. <laughs> so I want to have people actually running the Baldi's Multimedia. So my business um, name is Baldi's Multimedia. Yeah. So it's on social media. Mm -hmm. So I want to have people run it while I go in back for construction. Yeah. Construction is something I know I'll go back to. Sure. I am not running away from it. Okay. My friends sometimes tell me, you know, you can come back. It mm -hmm. has a lot of money and it's right. Construction have a lot of money, but it is, you know, it is where your person really is. Really is, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's something you cannot lie. Yeah. Photography is something that you cannot lie. You cannot fake it. If you cannot do it, you cannot, you cannot do, do it. it. Yeah. So it's, I really, really love it a lot. And I hope just like the way other people are saying, I've inspired mm -hmm. them. I hope to inspire more people to actually really come into sports, sports photography sports and photography. change the Gambia sports through media because I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen our boys posting professional mm -hmm. images and I've seen my logo there. And every mm -hmm. time I see them posted, mm -hmm. even if they don't mention me mm -hmm. and I saw my logo there, right. I, that makes me really, really happy. happy. So, yeah. All right. So, okay. Um, since you said when you're growing up, there's not any media school in the Gambia. Would you use your construction experience to build a media school through photography? 
yeah that is that, that all that have been part of the plans and i hope i get sponsors to do that yeah, and definitely. the support because i know it's going to be of a very big change and a really big help for a lot of people mm -hmm. and there are a lot of um, young people that really want to study multimedia and photography and videography but they can't get the access to so what they even go in for is just direct journalism so hopefully one day to get that big multimedia school in the gambia where a lot of people can mm -hmm. come and have a lot of ex uh, exchange programs, programs with yeah. a lot of people outside the country wow. it's still nice. possible and yeah, sure. allah will help mm -hmm. inshallah, inshallah. And, uh, so i want to quickly find out dancers before you come okay. in i want to find out aside from you being passionate mm -hmm. about you know when, whenever you are passionate about something there's supposed to be a driving force or motivation that should continuously keep you going mm -hmm. um, not to say uh, you are not enjoying but what are some of the benefits aside from of course you are making headlines you're inspiring people and all um what you're doing is a very huge 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 you know right. tax and um uh, if you if you find yourself in other countries, the money you'll be making it's just going to be massive because it's 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 money. Mm -hmm. Are you have you gotten to the stage where you are reaping what you are sowing? I mean, in terms of because it's the same finances. You have dreams of opening media schools, right. motivating other people. If there is no driving force aside from the sponsorship where you be sponsored, family they buy tickets for you to be there and mm -hmm. all. You know, uh, are you getting the funds? Uh, I mean, are you working for the money? Is the money coming in? It's. I mean, it's it's very important um, to to know. Right now, um, mm -hmm. Afcon have really changed my <laughs> mindset about sports photography a lot. I have had conversations with different sports photographers. Some of them came through agencies, mm -hmm. um, employed them to come. I mean, they are telling me the amount of money they have paid. I'm like, okay. <laughs> then i am not doing anything then i'm not doing nothing. i am not doing okay. nothing at okay. all so the money is definitely not coming yet yes. but the fact that you know if other people know the worth of photography mm -hmm. yeah. when guardians posted me and okay i gave them the pictures to post me yeah. but they emailed me and said we want to pay for the pictures we post of you wow. so I'm like, why do you want to? Like, I have a lot of questions mm -hmm. coming, and they paid a huge amount of money for that. Just two images mm -hmm. went like ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That I was like, okay. And I went. To, he told me the amount of uh, money they paid to buy images from Getty Images mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. stocks. I was like, okay. I think I need to double it's up time. my standard oh, for course. photography. Because I mean, you I know what you bring to the table. You exactly. Know what you I know what I deliver and when we are coming here and I was asked am I going to sell my images I was like one thing I know let Gambians really enjoy what they are having right now mm. because if I leave I don't think they will mm. have that they have you again. so I really believe and that's just one thing about me if I believe I know it's going to happen that is why I was like, let them enjoy whatever they are having right now. Because I know our footballers are not paid that huge mm -hmm. amount of money. Mm -hmm. And they are not definitely going to take exactly. by the worth of my images. Like, right. if I tell them the amount of one image, mm -hmm. they will think I'm mad. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> they will think I'm mad. But it's because I know the work that went of into course. it. And I know the worth of the image. So... I'm like, let them enjoy it right now. <laughs> the time I, go, I, I know. Okay, so you've been in Ghana for some time now. For how long have you been in Ghana? I've been here like two weeks now. Yeah. And what's your experience like in Ghana? Can um, you share your experience? Yes. Yeah. So my first experience I have, first thing I will be like, Ghana is, is, is a nice place. I've always wanted to be here and the most beautiful part of it is that I'm not staying in a fancy hotel or anything. Mm. I am hosted by a Ghanaian family. Oh. They are really amazing, taking really, really good care of me and allowing me to have the best experience ever. Mm. And just the fact that I'm hosted by a Ghanaian family to show you they are nice, mm -hmm. like they are nice people. Mm. And the people I met, they are really nice. I don't know if it was the Afghan title or the because um one of the juma prayers that after the, we prayed juma at the university of akra akra yeah. sorry and they approached me that they knew me from the afcon they were really really nice wow. so i needed to go to the um sports stadium and they 
book a taxi for me. Wow. Paid the taxi man, took the plane number just so the man yeah, would sure. do everything yeah. to me. And on top of that, <clears throat> because I'm fasting, they gave me money so I could buy food when wow. I get there. I was thinking about how to get there and they did that for me. So any experience I have here have been really great and it's like home. Now I take public transportations to the uh, stadium from oh, wow. Bagomehul. Go buy food, take yeah, a walk. Yeah, you're Italian, oh, like yeah. actually. I I'm going to places on my own now, and I I know the money now. Oh, yes. that's that's nice. I mean, the money aspect is very important. Yeah. What are some of the delicacies you've you've had so far? Um, the money aspect, I it's the place is expensive. Ghana is expensive. Ghana is expensive. Yeah, food. I mean, compared to Gambia. Yeah, Ghana is oh. Ghana is really expensive. The money is more than our own, and I've been learning a lot of differences between Ghana and Gambia. And when I pay, when I paid up for, when I started paying for public transportation, I th- started saving a lot. I realized I have been killing myself taking taxis. Are to you the serious? No, I'm, I'm not taking. I mean, I'm not taking. I'm not taking. You do any, from, any taxi or anything? Just strictly. Yeah. I, so have you have you had the chance to enjoy any of our cuisines, our food? Yes, I tried the jello, uh, my Ghana farm. <laughs> <laughs> the Ghana jello. The Ghana jello. And I don't know if it's different from the one the KFC is selling or not, <laughs> but the, my host family prepared one for me and it's really nice. Wow. Yeah, I, I ate it. I ate it with my favorite, I think, chicken. Oh, that's nice. It was nice. And the bangu. The fact that just I had issue with palm oil, mm-hmm. so I could not eat it much, but I have always wanted to try bangu. Bangu. And it, nice. it's actually nice. <laughs> It is. So that that's um that just, 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 they are the two I actually you've tasted actually to said. Oh, okay. Okay, so since you've tasted Ghana Jollof and Banku, let me ask you this. Between Ghana Jollof and Gambia Jollof, which one is uh, your favorite? <laughs> what do you expect her to say? She should say Ghana and leave her country. Gambia is nice. Meanwhile, she'll go back to her country. <laughs> <laughs> Gambia, um, we call it Benatine. It's been a but, team. Yes, so it's somehow similar with jollof. Mm. But the fact that the Nigerian jollof and the Ghana jollof have the big rice. Mm. You've tasted a uh, Nigerian jollof? Yes, it's, you did? we have it a lot in the Gambia. Nigerian jollof? Yeah, we have a maker shop that sells Nigerian Oh, so, okay, so now let's come to West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Between Ghana jollof and Nigerian jollof, oh, <laughs> your take on one. Because I'm more used to the Nigerian one, though. Yeah, I'm more used to the Nigerian one. I'm more used to the Nigerian one. They are, they are all different. Mm. So, if um, you, yeah, if, you are going straight yeah. to the airports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> if it is, it's oh, like, yeah, you are going straight to the I airports. Don't... You are going back to your country. <laughs> <laughs> Our Benatine, we call it Benatine, but okay. you guys might call it Jollof. Jollof. It's huge yeah. yeah. different. It's okay. different. I don't know. The taste, yeah. how it's being prepared. Yeah, mm. plus the rice. Um, Our rice is small, small and grain. the rice here is big. Big grain. Yeah, okay. so it's a different thing. I mean, we'll prepare but, more, so you you get to make the decision. I mean, it's just one bite, so it it only makes sense that the ones you've been eating often, you're going to enjoy it at that. So don't worry, you are, you're going to be here for how long? Are we going back Sunday? Oh, Next week Sunday. That's that's nice. So um, during the Afcon, what was your best memories or the best match you had so far? So. My best, um, this one is really unforgettable because there's something, it's weird. So, uh, Nigeria and Ivory Coast were mm. playing in Abidjan, but mm. we were staying in Yamasuku. Yamasuku. But other matches, it's like six hours drive. So, oh, here wow. is, um, from Very Yamasuku close. to Abidjan, is three hours. Okay. So, I decided to go and attend the night because I want to take pictures of Victor Osebe during because he was the Africa best player mm. awarded. So, at least having him on my profile, profile was actually the portfolio. Nice. Exactly. So I traveled for three hours, nine o'clock from Yamasukuro, got to, it's actually more than that because I got to Abidjan by three. So Abidjan, what they did is they closed the road mm. and you have to walk. Yeah. Something you have to pay transportation, you have to walk the distance to the stadium and that stadium was like up. Mm. And you know, being like, being in Abidjan, it's your first time. The stadium is huge. You have never seen something <laughs> like that. You don't even know where the media officers are. Especially they speak French. Mm. And they don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> Language barrier. 
I that that experience I'll never forget it. So I went. So what I know is I was sold my card. Mm. Where will I get my accreditation? Card? Yes. Uh, where do I get my card to enter the stadium? Thank you. So the broken French, every single thing. But I know bus station is bis like mm. bus is bis. <laughs> bis. So bis the so yeah, that's, what, that, that's what you know. <laughs> that's only French you learn when you went to the coast. <laughs> so the language barrier too was really difficult. Yeah. So I sort the pictures. I make so the first half yeah. I leave the stadium before the match ends. Oh wow. So yes. I decided to leave the stadium, but unfortunately when I got to the bus station. It was like 6 p.m. Mm. So now going back to Yamasukuro, we were on our way and they were like, there's an accident that happened. We have to sleep in the bus. Oh my God. In the morning. So meaning I did a 24-hour travel. Mm. The time that I left Yamasukuro was exactly the time, the time I went back. Are you serious? I was dead. <laughs> I was, Such an experience. I, will never I mean, you, about can, you, you can never forget about it. And the fact that in, on, in the internet, they'd be like, nice pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did so well. went on but the I was scenes. rolling myself in that bus. <laughs> <laughs> you. I can imagine how you were quelling yourself with the bus. The guy that was sitting beside me was like, <laughs> <laughs> How do you do this? <laughs> like, that's, that's so nice. I mean, I, I'm so inspired. By you. your story, your journey, and how far you've come, honestly you. speaking. And um, I'm pretty sure my viewers um, are, are also inspired. I mean, a young, hijabi, beautiful lady um, doing such an amazing job breaking the status quo. It's, it's just amazing and inspiring. And um, I'm so honored to have you on our show today. It's a big privilege. We didn't have to travel all the way to Cam Gambia, Gambia to come and interview you. You came here and then, um, you know, we have the privilege of on having you on our show. I really, really, really appreciate um, this a lot. Um, but before I go, I would want to allow you to have your final words um, to my viewers, of course those watching you, the young ladies coming up, whether you are Muslim, whether you're a Christian, you're a Jewish, traditionalist, wherever you find yourself as a young woman, Muslim woman, uh, Christian, whatever, wherever you find yourself, I don't need to give, you, uh, give them your final words of encouragement. Um, so that's, I mean, they are watching you. It can inspire them to also be like you or even better, hopefully. Okay, the final words I have to say is that whether you are doing photography or not, whatever that you are into, um, just keep working hard. Honestly, hard work really, really pays off and it's really true. I have seen it and you can go through the worst and definitely whatever comes after that is the best thing that will, uh, sorry, the best thing that will ever happen to you. Um, also, I want people watching this to please subscribe and support a sister that I met today and doing really amazing work and I am really inspired to be here. And I want to tell my Gambian people, I'm not coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Ghana is nice. <laughs> Again, and I'm really happy to be here and I'm really, really honored. And what you are doing here, it's really amazing. This is beautiful. Thank this you. is absolutely beautiful. Thank and I pray it become international you interacting yeah. with different yeah. different people yeah. your media products and everybody is so professional yeah. and mashallah yeah. and so i pray allah make it easy for you thank you so thank much you i mean thank you so much for you. your work so kind and you know uh, motivational we also appreciate you so much thank for you. coming on our show um so as a token of appreciation um on behalf of myself and the entire team we want to thank you i mean for taking time because i know you are in ghana but you have very limited time but for taking time to be on our show to inspire our viewers to motivate them we are also we also learned a lot myself and my team we'd love to thank you so much so this is a little citation when you get to gambia you remember you were on our show chai with hidaya when you have the chance to speak on you know you can just say something um, just to promote the brand as well so we can go together. This is a little citation for you. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. and we are handed.
to have you as well. <laughs> this, is, this is really nice. Before getting to Gambia, I'll tell them all about it. Oh, <laughs> I'll exciting. post the pictures and I'll tell them what the experience I have. Thank here. you so much. This means a lot Bye. to the brand. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming on our show. It's been an exciting show today, having a beautiful lady breaking the status quo when it comes to photography and sports in general. And I'm pretty sure we've all learned a lot because I have, my team have learned a lot and I am positive that you've also learned a lot. But before we end today's program, let me quickly acknowledge my proud sponsors, MCB Rentals for our studio and equipment, Skin Mechanic for my skin, L Quincy Makeup Artistry for my beautiful makeup product, my beautiful makeup by Inner Beauty, my guest makeup, by Mobe's Beauty Styling by Posh by Deja. My name is Hidaya Abubakar, your favorite host. Until then, see you on the next episode. Bye.